Welcome back, folks, to another Let's Play. Today we will be doing The Lost Files of Sherlock Holmes in the case of the Serrated Scalpel. Great game, great graphics, great sound. Truly a classic of its era. Let's get this shit on the road. London, England. November 1888. The Lost Files of Sherlock Holmes. 1992. Electronic Arts. alley behind the Regency Theater. Who could that be? Yes? Begging your pardon, ma'am. This is a note from Mr. Holmes from Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yard. Oh, very well. I'll see that he gets it. Thank you, Constable. Have you been sufficiently fortified by Mrs. Hudson's murderous coffee, Watson, to put your mind to this mystery? Whatever are you on about, Holmes, so early in the morning? I'm sorry to interrupt your reading, old man. Mrs. Hudson has just delivered a very intriguing note. Would you care to peruse it? By all means. Mr. Holmes, a young woman has been brutally murdered outside the Regency Theatre in Oxford Street. The evidence here suggests that Jack the Ripper has emerged from under his rock in Whitechapel and struck savagely in Mayfair. Despite your contention that the Ripper's work is without motive and therefore not suited for your methods, I believe you would find this case of interest, and the Yard would be most grateful to hear your opinions. Gila Strong. I will not deny his request, Watson. If you would accompany me, I should be glad to have you at my side. Pleasure, Holmes. The Strahd seems finally to have recognized the value of your investigative techniques. And my blushes, Watson. Your compliment will turn my head. Let us see if I am truly worthy of it. Now, since we are playing Sherlock Holmes, I am going to keep the silliness to a minimum and try to focus on the task at hand which is find out who's killing and raping these bitches oh shit is the game over that was quick Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Come on. On with it then. Here we are. Check out these awesome graphics. Look, move, talk, pick up, open, close, inventory, use, give, journal, files, and setup. Several business cards. They read Sherlock Holmes, consulting detective. 221 B Baker Street, London. And of course our note from G. Lestrade. The Strad, not the vampire. Not to be confused with the vampire Lestrade. The jackknife, a common six blade utility knife, the type used by the Swiss infantrymen. Versatile in emergencies and dire straits, the primary blade of this one fixes unanswered correspondence and a few unwelcome bills to the wooden mantle like butterflies to a specimen box. You deny me? You deny me the jackknife? How dare you. Made of carved mahogany, this bookcase holds reference works, maps, gazetteer, and encyclopedia, toxicology, soil analysis, and chemistry text, a collection of specialist monographs, and selected historical classics. <laughs> All right, let's go check this out. Go check out the scene of the crime. Come along, Watson, the game's afoot. This is the CD partial talkie version. Quite so, Holmes. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, very good of you to come so quickly. After you've thoroughly examined the scene in the corpus delecti, please share your observations with me. A woman approximately 25 years old has had her jugular vein viciously slashed. This was certainly the cause of death. There are several non-fatal gashes on her abdomen abrasions on the back of her neck, and scratches on her left ring finger. The distinct odor of a particularly, particularly cloying and inexpensive brand of perfume pervades the body. Alrighty. The knife wounds were clearly made with a short blade, perhaps the size and shape of a scalpel. Close observations reveal that the blade was serrated. There is a trace of white powdery residue on the unknown nature and the victim's coat immediately beside what appears to be the first of the abdominal wounds. We have cigarette butts, handbag, there's an iron bar, let's take the iron bar. Let's check out the cigarette butts. Behind one corner of the crate are a half dozen cigarette ends, recently crushed into the dirt. The brand is common and smoked by thousands of Londoners. The smoker was a man wearing heavy shoes or work boots. Given the length of the butts, his fingers are most certainly stained by nicotine. Nicotine! See what Dr. Watson thinks about this. Let's get his professional opinion on the wounds. Is it your professional opinion that these wounds match those described in the official reports of the Whitechapel murders? I'm sure they're much more intimate with the gory details of these cases than I, Holmes. You seem to have a stomach for it. 
The only thing that is clear to me is that the unfortunate woman is the victim of something more ghoul than human. Don't be so certain, my friend. The mysterious and monstrous are really the same thing. Is there anything you could tell me that isn't obvious from the scene, Inspector? The deceased was an actress here at the theater. Name of Sarah Carraway. She lived by herself out in Payswater. According to our only witness, there's a sister. Whereabouts presently unknown. The witness found the body but remembers nothing of the person. She saw fleeing the scene. You may talk to her if you'd like. Though she's a bit in the way of being hysterical at the moment. She's in the victim's dressing room. Through that door and up the stairs. But before you go, I'd like you to confirm some theories of my own. We already decided on an explanation for the crime inspector. There is no doubt this is the Ripper's doing. The fact that we are miles away from his habitual haunts in the Whitechapel is of absolutely no significance. If he'd left his calling card, it would be no clearer. The man is a monster. Let's see. You seem very sure of your facts, Lestrade, but I believe there is evidence that contradicts your interpretation. I assure you that I have examined everything in great detail, Mr. Holmes. I seriously doubt that I have missed a significant clue. What have you seen that goes against my theory? The killer's choice of weapon is most telling, don't you think? Indeed, my professional eye tells me that this woman was killed with a surgeon's scalpel. And we know the Ripper uses a scalpel with the skill of a medical man. Isn't that so, Dr. Watson? From what I read, Inspector, the answer is yes. But I will not presume to commit to myself before the autopsy is completed. I must say that if the scalpel was used, it was a dull one. The wounds appear a bit ragged. Well, that as may be. I'm certain that the medical examiner will confirm my observation. That a surgeon's scalpel was the instrument of death. Mr. Holmes, do you have any credible reason to believe... The weapon was not the scalpel? Uh, yeah, dickhead. The serrated edge. If you look closely at the victim's coat and the wounds, you may notice that the fatal blade had a serrated edge. Dr. Watson, can one find a serrated scalpel in a physician's black bag? I regret, Inspector, that I know of no such instrument in the hands of any medical man. Hmm, that is unusual. I suspect that this is insignificant. I never said the Ripper was a doctor. Perhaps his other scalpel lost its razor edge. He's done enough foul work with it, heaven knows. Let's not confuse the investigation with trivialities, gentlemen. Perhaps the murderer was imitating the style of Jack the Ripper. The gutter press has been filled with lurid accounts of the fiend's disgusting exploits. Perhaps won't feed the bulldog, doctor. I need facts, Mr. Holmes. My hypothesis is that the Ripper is responsible for these brutal murders. Because there may be a bit of confusion surrounding the serrated blade, I will concentrate my efforts on the question of the murder weapon. But I would not be adverse to you and Dr. Watson looking further into this entire matter, if you wish. You may speak with the witness in the victim's dressing room. You may want to examine the victim's flat at 21 Thread Street. Holy shit, I'm going to have to do a lot of reading. What else we got here? Set up, portraits, and windows, and calibrate, and joysticks, and auto help, and voices. And holy manjoli. All kinds of goodies. I'm going to go ahead and save here. must be Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. I'm Henry Carathras, the stage manager. Inspector Lestrade told me you might want to look about the place. Feel free. I'm afraid we can't be of much help. Oh, Sarah. Is that the girl who witnessed the incident? Yes, her name is Sheila Parker. She was in dreadful state earlier, fainted dead away. As you can see, she's still very upset. I 
doubt she'll be able to answer any questions just yet. She better answer some questions. tiny pixel of a spring down here that I see. Let's pick that up. I believe this spring may be helpful in repairing the lock. Why, yes, thank you. I believe that that is just the piece I need. I'll have this finished in a moment if my fingers don't fail me. All right, I'm gonna get this lock fixed. What else can we pick up around here? Flowers. I'm taking your flowers. Parker, I'm sorry to trouble you. Do you think you could bring yourself to describe what you saw? Uh, so sad and I... Oh, so horrible. I can't bear to think about it. Bobby! She seems near hysterical, Holmes, and rightly so. I doubt she'll be of much help in her current condition. Seems to be all we can have here. Let us look at this handwritten card. The card reads, Dear Sir, what in a name? A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. A secret admirer. Surprisingly, this is the product of a feminine right hand with the habit of dotting the eyes with tiny hearts. <coughs> Dot them tiny hearts, boy. Above the door on the jam is a noteworthy stain. The stain has the look and smell of massacre hair oil. There is spattering around the stain indicative of a mild impact. A single black hair, two inches long, is caught in the oil. Holmes, if you'd like to question Miss Parker before we leave, I have a sedative that might calm her. This woman's distress appears to be genuine, Watson. As a professional observer, would you say her behavior is that of a person who has suffered a terrible shock? She certainly is within what I would call the credible emotional range of such a person. I believe her response to be authentic, but the woman is an actress, and you yourself, Holmes, have fooled me countless times with your own sham performances. So bust out that quaalude. She got a... Lawson, do you have anything that might call on Miss Parker? We might as well have the benefit of her testimony, Migo the Lestrade claims it to be. Yes, Holmes, I am carrying a potent sedative. A small dose should do. Try giving her this. Thank you, sir. I feel better. I'm much like I'm swimming underwater. I think I can answer questions now. My tongue will obey my brain. Miss Parker, do you now think that you might tell us what you saw this terrible murder? I saw Sarah lying there dead. Blood was everywhere, but especially by her head. I could see her, her insides. Ew! A man in a cloak was running off to the street, but I didn't get a good look at him. I didn't see no more than that, sir. Honest. Ah, ah, oh! 
I guess next thing I know, Mr. Carellos is waving his coat in my face. Do you know the secret admirer, the person who gave her these flowers? Oh, and neither did Sarah. She never knew it was what to appreciate gifts from strangers, but she's so like these, she decided to keep them. Just tonight she told me I could throw them out if I had a mind to. Now the inspector told me not to touch anything until he completes his investigation. How am I supposed to get dressed? She's guilty! Arrest her and hang her at the gallows. Look at all this area to explore. Holy but Jesus. Let's go to Sarah Caraway's flat. wicker basket of the type manufactured in Singapore and sold in nearly every street market in the metropolis. This one contains a conventional assortment of dirty laundry. Among the sheets, towels, and female undergarments is a manch orange colored rugby sweater. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Pick up the sweater. My rugby sweater. The man's rugby sweater with the colors and insignia of the Kensington Rugby Club. The back of the collar is heavily stained with Maca oil. Macassar oil. I, well, I don't know. Mascara. Is that mascara? I don't know. And a few black hairs are embedded in the fibers of the wool. That's how you spell mascara. Shit. Umbrella. Let's investigate this umbrella. Bing, bing. A key, amazing, Holmes. Only you could draw good luck from an action that's supposed to yield its opposite. Thank heaven you're not superstitious. And we pick up the brass key. Well, that's really all we need from here for now. So let us depart. It's time to head back to the lab. Determining cause of petal discoloration. Hmm. Interesting. The petal is artificially dyed.
adding nitric acid to warm water bath. Adding silver nitrate. Adding ground flower petal to solution. A yellow precipitate indicates iodine. The dye used must have been iodine base. Interesting. to this little little scanning over here. Wiggins. Require your assistance, Wiggins. At your service, Mr. Holmes. Do you have a job for the rare regulars? Yes, Wiggins. I have a certain flower I'd like you to trace for me. Very good, sir. Let's have a look at it then. Sure. Don't be impertinent, Wiggins. You know it's not a gift. Now remark those dark red lines running through the petals. They were caused by the application of an iodine solution. Find the vendor that sells flowers colored in this manner. You might want to begin your search around the Regency Theater on Oxford Street. The Regency it is, Mr. Holmes. If you're right, it shouldn't take us long to find the seller. Be back in a jiffy. And time to travel. This time we are going to go to... Let's see if Wiggins is back yet. Located the source of the flowers, Wiggins. Yes, sir, it's a girl named Leslie. She sells flowers just like the one you gave me. She's a nice cart set up in Covent Garden just outside the pub. Well done, my boy. Here's your payment and a bonus for the lad who tracked her down. Thank you, Sherlock Holmes. Time to go to Covent Garden. Hello, good show. Buy some flowers from Leslie. Hold on. I'm trying to pick up some wire basket with flowers first. Just dump these out over here. of interest here. The barrel is full of colored water. The water is deep red as dye or stain has been added to it. Peering deeply into the fluid, you can make out a shiny object at the bottom. Hmm. Use the wire basket on the what? done and we have some kind of cuff link a shiny brass cuff link with the initials GB inscribed upon it all right folks well that's it for this video we'll see you back in another episode of 
Sherlock Holmes in the case of the serrated scalpel. Stay tuned.